our last lecture we had discussed the case when an electron approached a potential step and we were calculating the reflection and transmission of that electron wave. So, we considered a potential step such that the potential is 0 for x less than 0 and it is equal to v 0 for x greater than 0. So, there are two cases one in which E is less than V 0 and in the other we will have the energy of the incident particle is greater than V 0. So, in our last lecture we had considered E greater than V 0 and the solution of the Schrodinger equation d 2 psi by d x square plus 2 mu by h cross square E minus V of x psi of x is equal to 0. So, in the region x less than 0 this is V is 0. So, that in the region x less than 0 the solutions will be psi of x is equal to e to the power of i k x plus b into e to the power of minus i k x where k square is equal to 2 mu e by h cross square. The first term represents a wave propagating in the plus x direction and the second term represents the the reflected wave which propagates in the minus x direction and that is because as I had mentioned earlier the time dependence is of the form of e to the power of minus i omega t. So, this is equal to e to the power of minus i e t by h cross and so when I multiply the space dependent part with e to the power of minus i omega t this represents the forward propagating wave or the incident wave and this term represents the backward propagating wave or the reflected wave. In the region I am assuming E greater than V 0 as we had done in our last lecture. So, in the region x greater than 0 we will have the solutions psi of x is equal to c into e to the power of i k 1 x plus d into e to the power of minus i k 1 x where k 1 square k 1 square is equal to 2 mu e minus v 0 by h cross square. So, once again this represents a forward propagating wave and this term represents a backward propagating wave. Now, in the region 2 that is in the region x greater than 0 there cannot be any backward propagating wave because there is no reflection that can take place and so therefore, d is equal to 0 this is my boundary condition. So, this term can be this term vanishes and so we match the boundary conditions and found out the relation between we found we had found out the c by a and b by a. Before we interpret that let me mention that uh, few lectures back we had associated with the wave function psi is the current density which was given by j vector this is the current density which is equal to i h cross by 2 mu multiplied by psi grad psi star grad psi star minus psi star grad psi. Now, this can also be written as the real part of psi star h cross by i mu delta psi 
in for the one dimensional case delta psi by delta x this is the x component of the of the current density if the wave function depends only on the x coordinate which it is true in this particular example then it will become like this we if i have a wave function the space dependent part is e to the power of i k x then the associated current density will be j will be the real part of psi star that is let us suppose this is a into e to the power of i k x. So, a star e to the power of minus i k x multiplied by h cross by i mu delta psi by delta x will be i k into a into e to the power of i k x. So, therefore, a a star is mod a square and and this fact this term cancels with this term. So, this will be multiplied by h cross k by mu. So, my incident wave associated with the incident wave is the current density h cross k by mu multiplied by a square. This should be also physically obvious because h cross k represents the momentum. So, momentum divided by mass is the velocity. So, that is the current associated with with the position probability density associated as mod a square. So, similarly the 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 reflected wave the uh, the uh, the reflected wave is described by b into e to the power of minus i k x and if you substitute it in this expression you will get h cross k by mu into b square. This is my reflection uh, reflected current density associated with the reflected wave. Similarly, the transmitted wave for the transmitted wave the wave function in the region x greater than 0 we had written down as c into e to the power of i k 1 x and if I substitute it here. So, the transmitted wave will be mod c square h cross k 1 by mu. So, therefore, from these two expressions one can find out one can find out that the reflection coefficient the the reflection coefficient is the the reflected current divided by the incident current. So, that will be equal to mod b square by mod a square and this as we had found out in our le last lecture this was equal to k minus k 1 divided by k plus k 1 whole square. the transmission coefficient will be equal to the transmitted current divided by the incident current and this will be equal to mod c square divided by mod a square and then this will be h cross k 1 by mu divided by h cross k by mu. So, this will be k 1 by k and if you substitute the value of c by a whole square then this will come out to be 4 k k 1 divided by k plus k 1 whole square. So, we get the result that this is the this is the uh, transmission probability and this is the reflection probability and if you add this two then you will get r plus t this is equal to k minus k 1 whole square plus 4 k k 1 will be k plus k 1 whole square and this will be 1. But one has to be little careful in calculating the current density and that is and therefore, the factors k 1 and k will appear in the expression. It is not just c by a mod whole square, but it is multiplied by k 1 divided by k. Now, there is one more thing that I would like to mention that if psi is real, if the wave function is real, then psi will be equal to psi star 
and if psi is real this quantity will be real this quantity will be real and so this quantity will be pure imaginary. So, the current density will be 0. So, if I have a V function which looks like this, so, so the expression for the current density is that j is equal to i h cross by 2 mu psi if the wave function depend only on the x coordinate del psi star by del x minus psi star del, del psi by del x. So, let us suppose my wave function psi is something like c into e to the power of minus kappa x, it is a real function. Then you can immediately substitute this here and you will find that the current density will be 0. And this also follows from the fact that if psi is real, if psi is real, then this quantity will be real, this quantity will be real and this is pure imaginary, so that the current density is 0. So, I leave it as an exercise for you to show that if I use for the wave function psi equal to so much, then the associated current density will be 0. So, therefore, when we consider the case, when we next consider the case, when E is less than V0. If E is less than V0, so this is x is equal to 0. For x less than 0, the Schrodinger equation is psi double prime d2 psi by dx square plus 2 mu e by h cross square. So, that is k square psi of x is equal to 0. So, I am assuming now the energy is less than v0, where k square is again the same quantity which is equal to 2 mu e by h cross square. So, the solution of this equation is again psi, psi of x is equal to e to the power of i k x plus b into e to the power of minus i k x. This represents the incident wave and this represents the reflected wave. Now, we consider the region x greater than 0, there the Schrodinger equation will be d 2 psi by d x square plus 2 mu by h cross square e minus v 0, e minus v 0 psi of x is equal to 0. So, since e is less than v 0, so this quantity is negative, so that I write this as minus kappa square psi of x 0, where kappa square is equal to is defined to be equal to 2 mu by h cross square v 0 minus e. And the solution of this equation will be, so this is psi double prime and the solution will be as I had discussed last time the evanescent wave, one term will be c e to e to the power of minus kappa x plus d into e to the power of plus kappa x. This term will uh, blow up at infinity, will go to infinity at x is equal to infinity, so I must set this d equal to 0. So, this is known as the exponentially decaying solution or this is also known as the evanescent wave, evanescent wave. And associated with this evanescent wave, the current density is 0, the current density is 0. So, there is a certain probability of finding the particle in the, in the classically forbidden region. You see, if I have E less than V0, the total energy is less than V0, so the kinetic energy is negative classically speaking. So, this is a region where classically a particle will not be found. However, quantum mechanically there exists a probability of finding it in the classically forbidden region, but it is an exponentially decaying solution and such a wave is known as an evanescent wave or an exponentially decaying wave. So, my solution will be e to c into e to the power of minus k kappa x and then we can uh, apply the continuity conditions. So, at x is equal to 0, we will have a plus b is equal to c, this is one condition and then i k if, if I 
have the derivative of the wave function equal to continuous then i k a minus b is equal to minus kappa c. From this equation we can find out what are the uh, so for example I have these two equations that a plus b is equal to c and i k by kappa a minus b is equal to minus c. So, if I add them if I add the two equations then I get 1 plus i k by kappa times a plus 1 minus i k by kappa into b this is equal to 0. So, we will have we will have b by a is equal to b by a I can calculate and that will be that will be minus 1 plus i k by kappa divided 1 minus i k by kappa. So, this will be minus kappa plus i k divided by kappa minus i k. And if I take the modulus square b by a whole square then this will be kappa square plus kappa k square this will be kappa square plus k square. So, this will be 1 indicating that the reflection is complete the reflection is complete. Now, this is what I had tried to tell you last time that when I have an electromagnetic wave which is incident at a rarer medium at an angle greater than the critical angle then you have the phenomenon of total internal reflection. The energy gets completely reflected. However, there is an evanescent wave here, there is an evanescent wave in the rarer medium and which can be used to tunnel. So, if you have a glass air glass surface then it will undergo internal reflection here and there is a certain probability that it can tunnel through the barrier. So, if you have if you have a potential step and if the energy is less than V 0 then physically one may understand that as if the particle sort of penetrates into the classically forbidden region and comes back the reflection coefficient is unity. In this case also in the case of in the case of reflection by a rarer medium what one understands it that the the wave enters the classically the the rarer medium sort of enters and it comes out it gets slightly shifted to the right. So, the same thing happens even in quantum mechanics you have a wave which is present in the classically forbidden region and and uh, the wave gets totally reflected the reflection coefficient is 1 and uh, but there is an evanescent wave in the classically forbidden region. So, that was the complete analysis for the for a wave electron wave incident on a potential step. The next thing that we will be discussing is reflection by a potential barrier that is you have here you have a barrier of finite height finite height and so something like this. So, let us suppose this is my x axis and this is v 0 and uh, this is x is equal to 0 and this is x is equal to a. Now, I have a particle which is incident which is coming from the left whose energy is less than v 0 whose energy is less than v 0. It is something like a tennis ball which in front of it there is a mountain. So, we know that the tennis ball will roll up to a certain distance and will come back, but here there is a certain possibility that it will tunnel through the barrier and will go through the other side. This is purely a quantum mechanical phenomenon, this is purely a quantum mechanical 
phenomena. And there have been experiments which have proved that indeed the particles will tunnel, do tunnel through the barrier, do tunnel through a, through a region which is classically forbidden. So, let us do the mathematics once, once again we have to solve the Schrodinger equation in the three regions. The three regions are x less than 0, x lying between 0 and a and x greater than a. So, in region 1, in region 1 the Schrodinger equation is the, the potential is 0. So, that d 2 psi by d x square plus 2 mu by h cross square e minus v. So, v is 0, psi is equal to 0. So, this we again denote by k square. So, the solution in region 1, in region 1 which is x less than 0 that is a into e to the power of i k x plus b into e to the power of minus i k x. So, this represents the incident wave and this represents the reflected wave. In the second region, we will have d 2 psi by d x square plus 2 mu by h cross square e minus v 0, e minus v 0 into psi is equal to 0, but e is less than v 0. So, I write this as minus kappa square psi is equal to 0, where kappa square is defined as as we had done before 2 mu by h cross square v 0 minus e. And the solution of this equation is psi in region 2, this is the region 2 will be c into e to the power of minus kappa x, this is the exponentially decaying solution. And since there is a boundary, we cannot reject the exponentially amplifying solution, because it will become large, but it will not become infinite. So, there is no reason why we have to neglect this solution. In fact, it has to be taken. So, this is the solution in the classically forbidden region. Then in the third region, which corresponds to, so this region, this, this is the first solution corresponds to x less than 0. This is in the region 0 less than x less than a and then for x greater than a, for x greater than a, the solu the, the wave function will satisfy the same Schrodinger equation, because the potential energy is 0. So, therefore, in the third region, in the third region, we will have f e to the power of i k x plus g into e to the power of minus i k x. This represents a wave propagating in the plus x direction. This represents, this term represents a wave propagating in the minus x direction. And since there is no barrier, no further barrier or a potential change beyond this place, so therefore, you cannot have a reflected wave because there is nothing to reflect it. So, g will be 0. So, this term we will have to neglect. So, we will have 5 unknowns 1 a, b, c, d, f and we will have 4 continuity conditions 2 at x is equal to 0 and 2 at x is equal to a. And using these 4 continuity conditions, one can find the ratio between any 2 coefficients. So, let us try to do that. So, continuity of the wave function, the continuity condition at conditions at x is equal to 0. So, if I apply at x is equal to 0, this will be a plus b 
and this will be equal to C plus D. So, we will have one condition as A plus B is equal to C plus D. And similarly, if I take the derivative, if I take the derivative, then this will be I k A times 1 because at x is equal to 0, this will be 1 minus so on. And here also minus kappa plus kappa d. So, we will have the continuity, this is the continuity of the wave function and continuity of d psi by d x, continuity of d psi by d x will lead to i k a minus b is equal to minus kappa c minus d. So, using these two equations, I can write c and d in terms of a and b. So, I can write down as i k over kappa a minus b is equal to minus c plus d. This is correct. So, I add them and I will get 1 plus i k by kappa into a sorry this will be b plus no this is alright this is alright plus 1 minus i k over kappa this is equal to c. So, I can sorry I am sorry this is multiplied by b is equal to c. So, I can write c as 1 plus i k by kappa into a plus 1 minus i k upon kappa into b. Similarly, d also I can write it as a linear combination of a and b. I just have to subtract this this equation from this equation. So, I will get an expression for d. Once we have obtained that, so we have expressions for c and expressions for d. The, we next apply the continuity conditions at x is equal to a. Continuity conditions at x is equal to a. So, we will have the, the the, the wave function was if you recollect the wave function was c into e to the power of minus i k x so you will have c into e to the power of minus kappa a plus d into e to the power of plus kappa a this is equal to f into e to the power of i k a this is the continuity of the wave function at the point x is equal to a. Similarly, if I take the derivative, so I will get minus kappa c into e to the power of minus kappa a plus kappa d e to the power of plus kappa a. And if I take the derivative of this, this will be i k f into e to the power of i. Now, this is slightly cumbersome algebra, but very straightforward. We have just now obtained expressions for C and D in terms of A and B. I leave it as an exercise for you to substitute those expressions here for C and D. And so, therefore, you will have something like this a some coefficient plus some coefficient b is equal to f into e to the power of i k a and again a plus some coefficients b will be equal to i k f into e to the power of i k. 
from these two equations I can find out what is b by a whole square. So, this will be my reflection coefficient and then you can find out what is f by a whole square which will be my transmission coefficient. So, actually the reflection coefficient will be you see associated with with a into e to the power of i k x the 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 current density the current density is given by h cross k by mu multiplied by a square this is the incident the reflected will be h cross again the same k mu b square and the transmitted transmitted will be again h cross k my mu mod f square. So, since the same k appears in all the equations. So, the reflection coefficient which will be actually the reflected current divided by the incident current will just be equal to mod b by a whole square and the transmission coefficient will be mod f by a whole square. And if you if you carry out this algebra I leave this is as a simple exercise you will find that the 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 transmission coefficient will be t is equal to a f by a whole square this will be equal to 4 k square kappa square divided by k square plus kappa square it is fairly straightforward whole square sin hyperbolic sin hyperbolic square kappa a plus 4 k square kappa square and the reflection coefficient will be equal to mod b by a whole square will be equal to k square plus kappa square whole square sin hyperbolic square kappa a divided by the same thing that is k square plus kappa square whole square sin hyperbolic square kappa a plus 4 k square kappa square. As you can see if I add these two up the reflection and the transmission will be equal to 1. So, therefore, so therefore what we have shown above is, is a, a very important application of uh, the solution of the Schrodinger equation that you have an incident wave on a potential barrier like this, you have a reflected wave, you have a you have an incident wave, there is a reflected wave and there is also a certain probability for the particle to tunnel through the barrier. So, if an individual electron approaches a barrier, then there is a certain probability for it getting reflected, there is a certain probability for it getting transmitted. What will happen to an individual electron? No one can predict. One can only predict the odds, the probabilities of the events. And so, therefore, if one is not making a measurement, then it is both in the reflected beam as well as in the transmitted beam. Only when one makes a measurement, then this, then the electron certainly collapses to a state when it is found either in the reflected beam or in the transmitted beam. So, this is something similar to, uh, to, the, to the famous Michelson uh, interferometer experiment. I have a I have a photon this is very nicely discussed in Dirac's book that it can get reflected as well as transmitted. So, there is a certain probability I would say half probability of it getting reflected and a half probability of it get transmitted. So, unless you make a measurement it is described by a wave function which is present here as well as here. So, it is in both the beams and it is because of that these two beams can be further reflected and made to interfere. 
So, this is the same thing that we had discussed quite some time back that the electron passes through both this slit, both the holes simultaneously. So, similarly, if you have a potential barrier, if you have a potential barrier, then an electron is incident from the left, then after it interacts with the potential barrier, it is both in the transmitted beam and in the deflected beam. There is a certain probability of it being found there in this region as well as in this region. So, this is the concept, the underlying concept in quantum mechanics that uh, there is a certain probability of it being reflected, certain probability of it getting transmitted. What will happen in, an in, in a particular event, no one can predict. One can only predict the odds of happening in a particular measurement. So, therefore, we have here a, a tunneling through a barrier and this the equations are almost identical to the to the to the phenomenon that I had mentioned very briefly in my last lecture that is the phenomenon of frustrated total internal reflection. Now, that is entirely a classical phenomenon that in which you have in which you have a rarer medium and uh, and it is because that 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 a, that a light wave is incident it there is the evanescent waves are created in this rarer medium and there is a the the light wave is incident at an angle which is greater than the critical angle there is a probability that it will be reflected back but there is a small probability that it will it will tunnel through this rarer medium and appear on the other side but this comes out from by classically by solving by solving the classical Maxwell's equations. So, this phenomenon is known as the frustrated total internal reflection and uh, the, the it is quite analogous to the phenomenon of the one solves the same type of equation in, even in considering the uh, tunneling through a potential barrier. In fact, according to geometrical optics one will have always 100 percent reflection and one says that the relationship between geometrical optics and wave optics is the same as that between classical mechanics and quantum mechanics. In geometrical optics there will be always the ray will be reflected back and no ray will be found in this particular region. In, in, in classical mechanics a particle which is incident here will always be reflected, there will be no transmission because it cannot enter this region. This is a classically forbidden region in which the total energy is less than the potential energy and classically speaking therefore, it leads to a negative kinetic energy. So, the particle can never in, uh, uh, enter inside the barrier and so therefore, it is always reflected back. On the other hand, when you solve the Schrodinger equation on the other hand when you solve the Schrodinger equation you do find that there is a small possibility of it tunneling through the barrier. Now, I will do one more problem in one dimensional one, one more problem uh, of involving the solution of the one dimensional Schrodinger equation and that is the potential uh, well problem. That you have a potential well in which in which say this is uh, b equal to 0 for x less than minus a by 2 to x less than a by 2. I had discussed some time back that if the potential energy function is a symmetric function that is v of minus x is a v of x then the solutions can always be written down which are either symmetric or anti-symmetric. That is the eigenfunctions can be written down as psi of minus x will be either minus plus psi of x which is the symmetric function or it will be minus psi of x which is the anti-symmetric function. So, this follows from the fact that I write down the Schrodinger equation d 2 psi by d x square plus 2 mu by h cross square e minus v of x 
e minus v of x psi of x is equal to 0. Now, if I make a transformation x to minus x and since v of minus x is equal to v of x. So, we find that d d 2 psi of minus x satisfies the same Schrodinger equation 2 mu by h cross square e minus v of x psi of minus x. So, therefore, psi of minus x must be a multiple of psi of x and therefore, if I if I make the transformation again psi of minus minus x. So, therefore, psi of x will be lambda psi of minus x. So, this will be equal to lambda square psi of x leading to lambda is equal to plus minus 1 lambda square is equal to 1 implying lambda is equal to plus minus 1. So, therefore, psi of minus x must be either plus psi of x or minus psi of x. If you recollect that when we did the harmonic oscillator potential, it was something like this and then this potential function is symmetric with respect to x and the wave functions are wave function the, the wave functions that we had calculated for the for the linear harmonic oscillator problem in which v of x is equal to half mu omega square x square. In this case, you have v of minus x is equal to v of x. So, we found out we had found that psi of x psi n of x is equal to n sub n this is the normalization constant h n of psi e to the power of minus half psi square where psi is a multiple of x psi is equal to gamma x. Now, h and psi are alternately the Hermite polynomials which are even and odd. So, for example, h 0 of psi is equal to 1, h 1 of psi is equal to 2 psi, h 2 of psi is equal to 4 psi square by minus 2 something like that, h 3 of psi will be equal to 8 psi cube minus 12 psi. So, h 0 of psi, h 2 of psi, h 4 of psi, h 6 of psi are even polynomials involving even powers of psi, h 1, h 3, h 5, h 7 will involve only odd powers. So, therefore, psi 0, psi 1 of x, psi, sorry, psi 0, psi 2, psi 4 they will be all even functions of x and psi 1, psi 3, psi 5 will be all odd functions of x. So, whenever the potential energy function is a symmetric function of x, whenever v of minus x is equal to v of x, then the eigen functions are either symmetric functions or anti symmetric functions. So, let us use this to, to solve the, the, the one dimensional potential well problem. The one dimension, this is a very important problem, one dimensional potential well problem in which the, the, the potential function as I had mentioned earlier is that you have this is x is equal to minus a by 2, this is plus a by 2 and uh, this is v 0, this is v 0. So, let me first consider the case where 0 lies between with where, the, where, where the energy lies between 0 and v 0. So, so, let me write down the solution the, the Schrodinger equation in region 1, region 1 is region 1 corresponds to mod x less than a by 2 where the potential is 0. So, where v of x is equal to 0. 
So, therefore, the Schrodinger equation is d 2 psi by d x square plus 2 mu e by h cross square which I write as k square psi is equal to 0 where k square is equal to 2 mu e by h cross square. We write the solution in terms of sine and cosine functions. So, the sine function as we know is an odd function of x and cos function is an even function of x. So, we first consider the even solutions. So, the even solutions I write this down as psi of x in region 1 I can write this down as a cos k x. Now, in region 2, this is region 2 for x region 2, x greater than a by 2 and my v of x is equal to v of 0. but e is less than v 0. So, that the Schrodinger equation, so the Schrodinger equation becomes d 2 psi by d x square plus 2 mu by h cross square e minus v 0 psi of x is equal to 0. Since e is less than v 0 as in the previous case I write this is a negative quantity and I write this as minus kappa square psi of x is equal to 0 where kappa square is defined to be equal to 2 mu by h cross square v 0 minus e. e is less than v 0. So, this is d 2 psi by d x square is equal to so and the solutions are once again psi of x, psi of x you will have c into e to the power of minus kappa x which is the exponentially decaying solution plus d into e to the power of plus kappa x. So, in this region, so in region 2 you will have one which exponentially decreases and one which exponentially amplifies. And since this extends to infinity, so this will lead, lead to the exponentially amplifying solution will lead to a wave function which blows up at infinity, which blows up at infinity and we cannot allow that and so therefore, the wave function has to go to 0 at infinity and therefore, d must be equal to 0. So, we must neglect this term. So, I will have two solutions. So, so, psi of x is equal to a cos k x for x less than a by 2 actually z mod x less than a by 2 and c e to the power of minus kappa x for x greater than a by 2. So, I match the boundary conditions. So, I have a cos, please see this cos k a by 2 will be equal to c into e to the power of minus kappa a by 2. That is the continuity of the wave function at x is equal to a by 2 and then I differentiate it. So, I get minus k a sin k a by 2, I differentiate that and put x is equal to a by 2, this is equal to minus kappa c into e to the power of minus kappa a by 2. This is a set of homogeneous equations a and c. So, for a non-trivial solution, the determinant must be 0. So, I divide one with respect to the other and you will get, if I divide this, so you will get you 
you will get minus minus cancels out so you get k tangent of k a by 2 this is equal to kappa I multiply both sides by a by 2 so I get kappa a by 2. I hope you understand what I am trying to say that the determinant must be 0 because let us consider a test set of two equations a x plus b y is equal to 0 and c x plus d y is equal to 0. Now, one solution is of course, the trivial solution that x is equal to 0 is equal to y is equal to 0. But if I neglect this trivial solution, then you can see from here that y by x is equal to minus a by b and in the second case y by x is equal to minus c by d. So, you must have a d is equal to b c. So, the this is said that if, if a set of homogeneous, if you have a set of homogeneous equations, then for non-trivial solutions, this determinant a b c d must be equal to 0. This is for non-trivial solutions. So, here for example, you have a c here, a c here. So, for non trivial solutions, one trivial solution is a is 0, c is 0, that corresponds to the wave function, the uh, wave function vanishing everywhere. But otherwise, if I do not include those trivial solutions, then this must be equal to this. This is said to be a transcendental equation. Now, this is very important and I want to spend some time on this, so that you understand the meaning of the word transcendental equation. Now, I put this equal to xi, so you have I define this as xi is equal to k a by 2, so my, so my xi square is equal to k square a square by 4 or this is equal to 2 mu e a square by 4 h cross square. And kappa a by 2, let us suppose I write it as eta. So, you will have eta square is equal to kappa square a square by 4. So, this is equal to 2 mu kappa square is V 0 minus E A square by 4 H cross square. So, if I add them up, so I get xi square plus eta square. So, E E cancels out, you get you write this as alpha square which is equal to 2 mu v 0 a square by 4 h cross square. For a given potential, for a given value of v 0, for a given value of a and of course, h cross is a constant, this is just a number. So, I get this therefore, eta is equal to under root of alpha square minus psi square. So, the equation that we obtain is psi tan psi is equal to eta that is under root of alpha square minus psi square. We say that this is a transcendental equation. That means, for a given value of alpha, for a given potential, as I had told you, alpha square is equal to or alpha is equal to under root of 2 mu v 0 a square by 4 h cross square. For a given particle, the mass is known 
for a given potential v0 is known a is known h cross is a constant so this is a number now it is only for certain discrete values of xi that the left hand side will be equal to right hand side and what is xi square so uh, what is uh, xi square is equal to 2 mu e a square by 4 h cross square so there are only there will be only certain discrete values of xi and therefore certain discrete values of e for which the left hand side will be equal to right hand side those are the eigenvalues of the problem so we we stop here in our my next class we will try to understand the the we will discuss in greater detail the solution of the transcendental equation that I have described here. Thank you.